Hey, what's good YouTube? Antiyami here, back with another video. And today I'm showing off my first place deck profile of the locals I went to on Sunday. Um, the list is not like too crazy and I feel like for the most part it's very standard. Uh, I haven't really updated it for the new format outside of like some going second cards, but um, yeah. I didn't really go against like crazy matchups. My first round, I went against Branded. My second round, I went against Sue Ships. <laughs> Deck was kind of crazy. Uh, in my third and fourth round, I went against Matadones. So like no heavy Samurais, no Pearlies, um, no uh, decks like that. So no Mac decks. So without further ado, I'll go over the list and it's pretty simple. 41 card main deck. I know a lot of people like to ask or I like to give off the information of how many cards I'm playing in the main deck. So starting off with the, the fill spell. I play, of course, three fill spells, one terraforming. You need to see as many copies of this card as you can because this card is insane. Uh, for the tier monsters, I play two rhino hearts. I don't think you need more than two. I think two is a perfect number. You see it off mills pretty often. Um, you don't want to open this card that often um, unless you are searching it. Um, so I think it worked out as two is fine. Tier element merely, Sharon, and Halfness. You play the triple cash tier um, tier element. Really strong. No, nothing needs to be said about that card. It's very strong. Um, going for the Ashiju package, uh, I'm only playing one Shuffler in the main deck. I'm side decking the other one and it never came up for me to side it in um, based off my like results. I think I won every single game one. So game two, obviously I side out the shufflers. Like usually this comes out the deck and just keep the millers. But uh, this card came up like once in round one and that's about it. The millers were insane, of course. Um, Diviner. I decided to put this card back into my deck. I'm not a big fan of this card. I hate normal summoning in this card, but when you special summon this card off a cross sheep, it's like insane. It literally says mill five on your opponent's turn, and it's so funny. Um, this card honestly only came up in round four, I believe. I think it might have came up in a different round, like maybe in round two, but I was so far ahead, it didn't really matter. Uh, for the Blazing Cartesia package, this is the only two Blazing Cartesia copies I played. Um, this card is amazing. I really love Normal Summon this card and activating her effect to fuse with a tier element in the hand. And you can go into basically a Beatrice with that line. <clears throat> if you guys don't know what the combo is, I might show it off at the end of the deck profile, but this card is insane. The fact that it's also a tuner comes up a lot. And the fact that you can break this card off a cross sheet and fuse on your opponent's turn. But you have to remember it's only level 8s or higher. So you can't just make like Garua or something like that. Um, going into another like fusion package. Um, the Destiny package. Nothing that needs to be said about this. Like this makes Beatrice, which is the, the main thing about this deck it's just like it needs to go into beatrice because once you get into beatrice you have access to like legit your entire deck so broken and you play the one denier because if you um go into your dangerous and you have your malicious in rotation you can make this or send this to the graveyard and then you can make a cross sheet for free and plus it's another name so if you mail it you can make dangerous as well um, I only played two King of the Swamps. The reason being is because I didn't want to break on this card too many times because there's been times where I open this card and it doesn't really do anything. And of course, you want to see this card because uh, it helps you get into, you know, your Rukalos or get into your your King of the, not King of the Swamps, your, your Graffa card and other things like that. But it's not necessary to see on your first turn play. And of course, I'm not playing Polly, so there's no Guardian Chimera. But Guardian Chimera comes up very awkwardly in a lot of situations. And I found myself sometimes breaking the bar even without it. Like, Gorilla can help in a lot of situations, but I don't find it necessary. 
So I only play these two cards because uh, you mill a lot in this deck and also you can dump it off of Beatrice if you really want to go into those lines because again, your end board, uh, your main end board you're trying to push for is Guru plus Time Thief or Doer, which does not evolve King of the Swamp. So that's the reason why I made that decision. Um, going into the spells, I uh, played Double Scream. I feel like Double Scream was perfect. You could play it at three, but I found two to be very, very good. Uh, the Foolish Package, I played one Goods, one Foolish Burial. Uh, goods came up a lot, which is fantastic, which you think is a one of. You don't ever see it, but I saw it just enough. And Foolish Burial is just says mill five for the most part. It helps you, um, you know, get your engine started. And then for the trap cards, I played two Solix, one Crime, one Trimmer Karma, um, no Meta Noise. Um, I just don't like that card. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, I just think this going first is a lot stronger than Meta Noise. Even though Cash Tira is still in the meta, uh, you can literally just like shuffle back. You can still, if you go first and make a board, Cash Tira can't play through it regardless. Even if you have like the Book of Moon. So, if you go first versus that deck and they don't activate Shifter, 9 times out of 10, you're going to win if you know how to set up the interruptions correctly. So, you don't really need it. And I think Crime is just stronger. Uh, for the going second cards, I play Triple Droll. Droll's insane. I won a lot of games or weaken a lot of boards for this card alone. It's really, really strong. Uh, I play the Triple Gamma Seals. Uh, one, they're Aquas, two, they um, also just do a really good job of breaking boards. I play the one main deck, Kari Kara. The reason why I'm only playing one in the main deck, one, I don't think it's that strong into other matchups outside of the Cash Tier matchup, but it did come in clutch fighting the Brandon player because he won the die roll and he made uh, Mirror J plus the uh, other Fusion Dragon, the newer one. It's the one that's like the trap card, the explosion. So he was all both those cards. And uh, I tribute over to his monsters and it helped me push for game, which is extremely funny. And the last going second cards, I played double dark road no more. Just another card to help push through boards. Um, it came up once in a tournament. This card came up once in a tournament. Oh, and the other reason why I do play the Kimikara is because if I know some of the Binder, there's some plays where I want her to be a three so she can go into Baron with the Tier Cash Tier. Um, didn't come up in this tournament, but it came up in practice. So I thought that was like the reason why I want to play this over like another Kaiju or something. Just a little crazy, like cool tech, but didn't come up in this tournament at all. So um, that's it for the main deck. Um, for the extra deck, I'll go over it real quick. Uh, we have Cross Sheet. Cross Sheet is amazing. It just allows you to play on your opponent's turn more. Uh, and then obviously you can revive a card back from your graveyard. You got the Rhino Heart. You got the Blazing Cartesia. You got the um, Diviner. Really strong card. One bear on the floor because you play tuners. Uh, Time Deep Doer, the best rank four monster in your deck. And you got the Beatrice, the best rank six in your deck. Uh, nothing needs to be said about these two cards. They just say, do whatever you want. You can fusion with this card. You can, it's insane. You already know what these cards do. Uh, we play one Tiramit Rokalos, one Kaleido Heart, uh, one Dangerous for the, you know, hero package. Uh, we play Despian Quarterless with the um, Dust Dragon with the Blazing Cartesia package. Uh, once this card gets sent to the field, usually I'll link this card off for a cross sheep if I ever make it. And then if my opponent activates a monster effect, especially with the monster, you can banish it from the graveyard to bring this out. And I'm playing this over the, um, I forget his name, but the 32-32 the guy. It's because like, I remember I went against Sword Souls one time and they were basically pushing for game and I had this in the graveyard. So when they went into, um, they went into Yong Long hand effect, right? The special summon himself and then special summon a token. This triggered this effect to special summon this. And he made the um, Sword Soul level 10, to, like reduces all my attack. And if I banish a card, you know, blah, blah, blah. So 
uh, I turned all his monsters to zero. He couldn't get over it. And then on the crack pack, I turned all his monsters to zero and basically won the game. So that was very, 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 very cool. And he comes up a lot in that scenario where it just forces my opponent to like, can't get over my cards. So it's good. Um, this dumps any level six or lower uh, dark or light from extra deck or deck. And a lot of times you can dump um, Grua to upstart essentially and put another fusion in the grave so you can go into your Drago Sepalia. But you could also dump Malicious and then you can go into your Destiny Hero plays from there too. And that's the combo I was talking about. If you have a um, a tier in hand, I guess I showed, showed this off right now. <clears throat> so Blazing Cartasia plus a tier name. Let's just say uh, Sharon. So you normal summon this and then you activate the effect to fuse with these two cards in your, you know, the one in the hand. And then uh, you'll make the Dust Dragon. You make the Dust Dragon Chain Link 2. You make Sharon Chain Link 1. And Dust Dragon would dump the Malicious. And then uh, Sharon refused to make the Dangerous. And that's how you go into your Beatrice. It, comes, it came up a lot during the tournament, by the way. It came up a lot. Every time I drew Blazing Cartagia, I had a way to get into a tier monster in hand, and that was like a lot of my main starting plays, which is really strong. Uh, one Money Mud Dragon, one Graffa, and then of course I still play the Lubelion and Destiny Hero Enforcer. Comes up when you're still trying to grind with your opponent. This in a very low impact game state is so broken, it's insane. Um, but yes, that's the extract. And going and get to the side deck, uh, again, nothing crazy. Uh, I side deck the other um, Rodora for matchups that come up, like maybe like Math Max or like Branded. Um, decks like that, I guess, uh, Runix. But I haven't really been seeing any Runix around out at all. Like they kind of fell off the face of the planet. Same thing with like Sprites. Uh, I play one back row removal and um, tier Tillamence Heartbeats. A lot of times, I always side this card going first uh, because you want to take out, obviously, like Kira Kara and Dark Blues no more. So if you mill this card, you can bring back some of your um, traps from your graveyard, which is really good. But obviously, you just want to play this for like back row removal. It's like a Cosmic Cyclone, but it's like searchable and it's really good for discards. So really good. Came up zero times in the tournament. This came up zero times in the tournament. Didn't even side this card in once. Um, the side frame package. Uh, I resolved this card maybe three times in the tournament. Broken. It was so, so good. Um, helped me. It beat Droll, I think, twice. Because people still Droll with, you know, <laughs> in a Gamma format. So, people got to stop doing that. But, yeah. This came up twice. Uh, won the game basically for free. Uh, and the other time, I negated, uh, I think it was... Was that Mad Num card the Arise Heart guy or the Rim Heart? Yeah, then that kind of pretty much ended his turn. Um, I would side deck the Cash Tears for some reason. I like Finn Rear in the side deck more than I like him in the main deck, and him just breaking boards in general is so so strong. And the reason why I didn't want to main deck him because Droll is so good, so I didn't want to like special summon this card, activate the effect, and get stuck on any droll so I, I i liked him for him just clearly just breaking boards he outed the anti-spell today uh he put a lot of pressure on the gunkin <laughs> matchup just insane card i liked it um it did what it needed to do uh the bestials uh just in case you play against like any light and dark matchups like math max or you know the branded matchup Stuff like that. This other matchup that I'm not going to explain, but you get the gist of the, the bestials. They're just very, very strong. Um, there's an argument that you could probably make these into DD Crows, but the reason why you like to play bestials because you play Beatrice, and Beatrice is really, really insane. So a lot of the times, if the uh, bestials come in, I would side out the entire hero package and just rely on the bestials to make rank six. 
because uh, Diviner can be a level 6. There's other cards in your deck that can be level 6. Um, you still got the uh, Garua, but yeah. And then another basically Fenrir. I should have put this with the Fenrir, but Pankratops. Um, he didn't come up in this tournament, but I did side deck him. And um, in some certain situations, like versus like a Rise Heart, it's not an out to it, which is very, very strong. And Skull Mark Ladybug for time. Um, sided in once, but it didn't come up. So, you know, it's a good card. All right, guys. Well, that's the end of my deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.